Hello, you are welcome to this special broadcast, Common Sense Live Emergency Broadcast. So, I just want to welcome you. I will be playing the national anthem a second time while waiting for the audience to build. Brave Amazonians, fellow Amazonians, British Southern Cameroonians, this is a very trying moment in our struggle, and I thought I should come up now, and let's talk about the struggle. Let's talk about where we are. Let's talk about where we are going. Let's talk about the recent events. Let's talk about the safety of Mr. President, and the top government officials of the Federal Republic of Amazonia, I want to welcome you heartily to this broadcast, and I want to encourage you to do, to go, to do your best and help us to share. Please share and share so that uh, your, your audiences can join us your friends can join us this is this is what we have to be doing now many of us want to know what's going on many of us want to have know what has happened and what's going to happen so i just said we should have some time together um <clears throat> it is um about nine or almost nine thirty amber time nine twenty four Amber time, and so let's let's get started. Please invite invite your friends. I'm trying to I'm trying to get some people um, uh, connected. First of all, I'm trying to get to my Facebook page so that I can I can uh, I can sign in and um, invite uh, people on my timeline. So please do the same. Do the same. This is. This is the show. I want to welcome Mr. Anu Moket. I don't know if you have had any sleep today or uh, since yesterday. And Gua Johnson, who is watching, Lovet Mona, you're always there. I don't know if you also had some sleep. Jacinta Fon, thank you for sharing. Please, can you share so we can build this audience right now? Um, uh, share and share, please. God bless you. God bless you. I see, uh, in fact, nobody slept. That's the truth about it. Nobody slept. The enemy, the enemy took away sleep from our eyes. On Friday evening, on Friday evening, around 7, 19 hours 30, Amber time, we, we have the same time with Nigeria. The enemy zoom in, the dark forces zoom in. 
using the the the, 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 the DSS, is it the Directorate of State Security, they stormed the hotel where our noble uh, men, uh, leaders of the interim government, were meeting in Abuja to discuss the plight of refugees and the support that they needed. They stormed the hotel, about 12 of them, and they picked our president, uh, His Excellency Siseko Ayuktabe, picked up Mr. Tassan, picked up Pa uh, Fongala for Barrister Naluva B, and uh, others, about nine of them, and took them away to an unknown destination. It has been heartbreaking. And it took us almost 24 hours to know what really happened because of the way it was done. I have a lot of things to say. We have a lot of things to tell you, uh, but some are classified, some are not. I will try to tell you some things that are, you should know about what is happening. And I decided to make this broadcast, which I initially intended to be in Pidgin in English language, so that the Nigerian government and operatives might also be able to understand, hear this message. Some of you might forward it to some of them so that they can hear what we are thinking and what we say about what has happened. So I encourage you, if you have any forum, that is uh, any forum with uh, Nigerians and Nigerian leaders, please forward this message to everybody forward as as much as you can praise god praise god so let me just let me let me share here because i see my icon came on so continue to share continue to share great okay the first thing I feared we feared uh, when we learned about the arrest was the time it took for us to get the news and the fear we had was that if these were La Republic agents who were granted uh, the pass to come into the territory and arrest our people, what a damage would have been done within 24 hours. But uh, thank God that did happen. I came to assure you that our people, His Excellency Sisiko Ayuk Tabe, is still in Nigeria. He is, uh, he is locked up at the third district police um, uh, station in Abuja with the rest of our leaders. All of them are there together. So he is still in Nigeria. Every report we have heard that they have been deported and just all the falsification that is going on on, on uh, CRTV and Vision 4 and all lying uh, local uh, radio stations and those that have been paid to spread propaganda, all these are not true. Our leaders are in Nigeria in the third district police station in Abuja. You know, Nigeria is a Commonwealth nation. We are all of the Anglo Saxon tradition, and so we are, we are. They respect the law. They are, a, they are a state of laws. So they, they are not like some rambos who we know very much are found in La Republic where there are no law. They don't respect any laws. They do anything. It's a jungle. They are not like the jungle republic of La Republic. At least they have decided to abide by the law. So we want to follow them by the, by the law. 
when you have a people that are ready to follow the law, then you have you have a chance to argue your case. But when you have a lawless place like La Republic, which uh, which is uh, detaining our leaders with some without trial, like Justice Aya, they detained him for so long without trial even, and they just released him like that after eight months in prison. And there is no 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 regret, no compensation, nothing, no charges. They just release him. That is a terrible state. But in Nigeria, it's not so. The court is already involved, and the law will follow uh, its course. And we have made sure, as the, Fed, as the Federal Republic of Amazonia, the, uh, the interim government, we have made sure that we have um, contacted, we have contracted uh, reputable law firms in Nigeria and abroad to make sure that we fight the legal battle to free our people. So the only thing I want to tell you is that please, if we, you have to make any contribution instead of being uh, stressed up and not able to sleep, just go to ambergov.org right now and make a contribution. That contribution speaks volumes towards the freedom of your beloved president and our beloved comrades. So let's make that contribution now. Let's double it. I don't care how much we had given before. Let's go ahead and do so now, please. Let's do so now. That is a way to speak. That is how to, um, how to transform your, your, your anger into positive action. If you are just angry and you cannot sleep and uh, you are hoping for the best or fearing for the worst, you don't change anything, but when you can translate that into a concrete action, you pick, make a donation, and you know what will happen. You know the resources, resources in our hands, what we can do. Then you can be sure that you have contributed towards the freedom of your beloved president. <laughs> now, one thing that happened is that the manner in which our president and members of his cabinet who were not hiding who were not even armed were arrested the manner in which this man was arrested they were arrested leaves a lot of questions to the nigerian authorities because we are gentlemen we appreciate the the, the generosity the hospitality that the Nigerian people have shown us by hosting thousands, scores of thousands of us who are fleeing the war, which has been brought on our, on our doorstep by the, by, the, by the gangster regime of Paul Beer, killing and maiming us, burning down old villages. We ran away from this carnage and we found ourselves in Nigeria and we were fully embraced. By the, by the authorities who have even spent money for hospitalization, for shelter, for food. You know, giving our people one last hope that they might live, that they will not die. So in Nigeria, we have a home. But the manner in which these people were arrested leaves a lot to question. You know, there is a difference between what the government does and what the people do. The people are different from the government, even though we say the government is the government of the people, for the people and by the people. But sometimes what the government does is different from what the people will do. So I want you to make a difference. Because the government is a set of people. They might make mistakes. They might make mistakes. The government is a set of people. They might make mistakes. But the people are different. Sometimes when the government makes mistakes, it's the people that draw their attention to the, those mistakes. So oh, try to make a difference between the government of Nigeria and the people of Nigeria. <clears throat> because there are so many influences. The, the, the governments come under so many influences. The governments come so, so under so many influences. So, a lot of influences. 
the Buhari administration, I want to I want to be fair with you, has come under immense influence. The influence of the multinationals, the multinationals such as uh, 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 the, the oil companies in the Niger Delta area, uh, such as don't want to hear anything about any form of agitation that might become an armed struggle that might in, increase insecurity in the east of Nigeria, they are so worried, they are so paranoid that they are putting every pressure on the Nigerian government to make sure that they don't, they don't give us any covering that we need, even as we fight for our lives, even as we fight to defend our people. We did not go for any war. We did not at any time take arms against the Republic. They came right to our doorsteps and they were killing us in troves. They have destroyed families, destroyed villages, destroyed our means of livelihood, take, took away even to the, our cutlasses that we used to go to farms. They hunt us to, in the forest like animals and we are forced to defend ourselves. And everything we have done and everything we shall do and we continue to do so is to defend ourselves. But these people are so paranoid that they think that insecurity around the East, including Bakasi, will make it impossible for them to uh, exploit their oil. And so they are pressurizing the Nigerian government to do everything to make us uncomfortable, especially our leadership in Nigeria. And that is, this, this is the extra support that La Republic has, has, has gotten to, 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 to put us <clears throat> under pressure. To put the Nigerian government under pressure, I, I meant to say. So there are many pressures coming from uh, all over. The pressures are coming from within. The pressures are coming from the multinationals. The pressures are coming from France. The pressures are coming from La Republique. The gangsters in Yaoundé. The murderers in Yaoundé, they are also mounting their own pressure. And somehow, you know, in diplomacy, it's a game of interest. In all these things, a game of interest. Nigeria wants to want to take a position that will benefit it. The Nigerian government is trying to take a position that will benefit it to the maximum. But in this program, I want to remind the Nigerian people and the Nigerian government what is at stake. <coughs> it's not as easy as that. <coughs> there is the there is the there is the, the shadow of the French behind what is happening. The French, I can see their fingerprints all over. I can see their fingerprints. I can see the fingerprints of, the, of La Republique all over what has happened. Nigerian government, if Nigerian government wanted to have any form of interrogation, they, they, were, not, they were not going to arrest us in a Gestapo style. They are not going to take us as if we were such, such criminals that were armed to the teeth. They would have simply given us a summons. And I can tell you, our president, uh, uh, Mr. Sesiko Tabe Ayok, is somebody that even if the Nigerian government gave him a summons, even if he was in the United States, he would have flown to, from the United States to Nigeria to attend that summons. It was not necessary for him to be arrested, for him to attend a summons, by a government that is housing his own people over whom he is president. <clears throat> he, did not, he did not need to be arrested to be, to, be, to, be, uh, uh, to be interrogated. So that is what rings a bell. It's not that the state, uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria wants to hear from us, but how they got this, they want to interrogate us, no. That's not the problem. How they got us to that point, leaves a lot of questions that is why even as a brother you trust that you have to ask questions why did they have to do that what is the intention why did they have to do that these are people they are already protecting some of them are refugees they are asylees so they are protecting them already they are already working with them in one way or the other as we respond to the problems of our refugees they did not need any kind of uh, 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 gunmen to come and arrest them before they report to the place. They were going to walk there on their own volition and on time. 
even if we were out of the country and they wanted us to go, I, I am not in, in Nigeria. Maybe the Nigerian government want to hear from me. I can even fly from where I am and go there. They don't need to send people to arrest me where I am to come to that place. So that is what was the quest, what, what brings about the questions. And you see, the things that followed after the arrest of our leaders, the things that followed, they leave a lot of questions. They leave a lot of questions. La Republic quickly dispatched between Saturday and Sunday, today, or yesterday, in some places now. La Republic, they, they dispatched an aeroplane with people to Nigeria. These people had a lot of money to squeeze the hands of some officials in Nigeria. You know, there's nothing they do more, La Republic can do better. They can only debribe, they can give bribes. Oh, they are first hand. Go and ask the United Nations, Guterres, and all of them that have come to try to investigate anything concerning our issue in Cameroon. They have been bribed. There are reports all over the media. So that's exactly what they do. Immediately they heard that these people were arrested, taken into custody. They zoomed in with, with an aeroplane that landed in Nigeria already. They have come with tons of money. They want to see how they can influence the outcome. You know? Of course, the French have, have put pr enough pressure to lead into the arrest so that these people will not have, we will not have a base, so to speak, in Nigeria. But the La Republic want to take over that opportunity. They wanted to take that opportunity to get these people delivered to them. And they know that uh, they, they cannot do it easily. So they have to send people with money to squeeze the hands of the, of, of the, of the Nigerians, Nigerian government, so that they can deliver them to, to, to them. So right now, as we speak, they are somewhere in Abuja. They are walking the corridors of power, looking for which influential person to bribe. That's what the Republic is doing. They are trying to bribe their way to get these people, these gentlemen, these leaders of our nation, our president, to be taken as a, as a, as a, war, pro, a war trophy back to Cameroon. Then you know what? They will fail because this is, this is the common law, Anglo-Saxon system. It is not the Rambo kind of law in Cameroon. It will not work. So this is a great disappointment. This is a great disappointment. I want to announce to you, La Republic, hear this before. All of you who are celebrating now in CRTV, telling lies and spreading propaganda, I want to announce, give you this bad news, that you have failed. It will not succeed. This is not uh, Equatorial Guinea. This is not one French uh, uh, colony that you just, there are no laws. No, this is Nigeria. This is the heart of the common law in Africa. It doesn't work that way, Mr. President, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Kim Jong-un Bia. No, it doesn't work like that. There is, a, there is law in Nigeria, there, 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 is, there is a court in Nigeria, and there, is, there are lawyers who inter help interpret the law and defend people when, it, when things like this arise. And thank God that's where we are now. That's where we are now. La Republic, they zoom in, they thought that they will, they will, establish, they will conclude a nocturnal deal with the Nigerian authorities so that they will just whisk these people, put them in their planes and carry them away. But hey, it is late. So, let Crooked CRTV not tell you any lies. That's why I had to, I had to come up. I say you should hear from me, you should hear from Secretary Chris, you should hear from, from a lot of people, you should hear so that you know the truth. When you put all this together, you will know what we're telling you. You don't need to go to Vision Card. That is total nonsense. <clears throat> so the bribery and corruption, corruption continues. Bribery and corruption. Bribery and corruption. They think that they will take that to Buhari. Buhari, if he has not done anything, everybody makes his own mistakes. But Buhari has one signature in his government, in his administration. It's, it's, the, it's Mr. Anti-Corruption. 
so what a paradox that you you la republic you want to come and, and bring international bribery to uh, the buhari administration so that they should ignore the law and deliver people who should have due process who should who should who should be whose extradition can only be authorized by a court judge you want to bring money to bribe your way so that they will ignore the law for you that cannot happen it's a lie you just wasted your resources you'll be disappointed you will be terribly disappointed i want to say a few things that cameroon and Nigeria have no extradition treaty. Extradition means a, 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 an agreement that will require a, not the, the two, any of the two governments to cooperate with the, uh, to, uh, on criminal issues, uh, to, 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 send, uh, de, to de, deport detainees to their country to be tried. There is no extradition treaty between Cameroon and Nigeria. None. None. So all those vision cards and CRTV that are blowing you lies, they can even bring some fake professors to come and tell you lies. Let it be known that there is no extradition treaty between Nigeria and Cameroon. That settles it. So the only way the Republic wanted to do something was to come and was to use their dark hands in their, in, in their shadows to, to whisk these people away from some unknown prison and then just smuggle them through across the border. And that is not happening again because it has already become an international sensation. They cannot hide it anymore. The balloon has come on top of the water. So the Republic can't succeed anymore. Even if, even if they, 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 they thought they could, even if they had some volunteers, they had bought over within the Nigerian administration, now it is no longer possible. That is the truth. <laughs> and the other thing we want everybody to know, our brothers in Nigeria and the Nigerian government, is that the right of self-determination, especially by a people who were once independent, by a people who were once independently governed as a people under international law, who only went into a union by political action, and that union was a failed union because it did not even comply with the very laws of the United Nations. Then self-determination is a right that the people of this British Southern Cameroon have the people we now call the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. We have that right. So, fighting for our self-determination is our God-given right. It is also an interna a law in international, a right in international law. And, and those conventions have been signed by, by Nigeria. It, Nigeria, as the, by the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The right to self-determination. And the other thing is for us to, to make it clear, we have nothing to do with the Niger Delta agitation, agitators. We have nothing to do with um, uh, the, 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 the indigenous people of Biafra. We have no relationship, we have no coalition, we have no collaboration whatsoever. And those are the lies that the French have cooked up, including the Esingan Mafia, and they have, they, they have brought fear in the heart of the, uh, the administration of uh, President Buhari to say, hey, something terrible is about to happen. It's going to affect you too. So please, just be wise. Why don't you shut up these people and bundle them and let this thing stop? If it stops, it's good for you, it's good for us. That is the manipulation. That is, the, that is, that is what they are doing. And I want to tell you that La Republic has even hired media personnel to help they spread that narrative to their European, European partners and to Nigeria so that they will, be, they, will, they will think that fighting against us is for their good. They have tried by all means to bundle us together as one. We have nothing. That's why they engineered the arrest of some people. They say they have found them with Niger dead. We have nothing to do with that. We have, not, nothing, we have nothing in common. What we are fighting for, we are not trying to break a nation that was ever one. We are only restoring what belonged to us. 
from uh, 1916 uh, to, uh, to, to, to 1960, when, Niger when Nigeria became independent, we were governed together as Niger with Nigeria under the governor general of Nigeria as one nation. Then before 1960, 1st October, the United Nations asked Nigeria to do what? I mean, asked um, uh, Britain to ensure the total and complete separation of the British Southern Cameroon from Nigeria. That was done documentarily and is documented at the United Nations. So the boundaries were carefully demarcated so that there are no errors. So that by October 19, uh, 1st October 1960, when Nigeria had independence, their, their borders were without question. And so, in that earlier, the, 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 the Republic of Cameroon had got their own independence on the 1st of January. So their own boundary too was carefully demarcated with the map in the United Nations. So we were only separated after we have been a people together with Nigeria for 40-something years. So... Nigeria is like home to us. This is, this is, this is, this, we are, we are more than friends. We are brothers. With bloodline, with bloodline relationship. That's what it is with Nigeria. Because our tribes are, are they, they cut across boundaries, are cut, they cut across international boundaries. Our marriages are in, uh, they cut across international boundaries. There are many families that are, are living half in Nigeria, half in Cameroon. That's what it is all along our borders. So we are, we are, you, we are, we are like finger and nail as far as Nigeria is concerned. So sometimes you need, you need to understand who these people, who we are before you come in. So I, I'm, I'm addressing the French here. You, you, you don't know what you are joking with. You don't know what you are trying to do. You cannot succeed. You cannot put a hedge between the, the, the people of the former British Southern Cameroon and Nigeria. It cannot work. It's like coming in a family and, and count the children and say five this way, uh, three this way. I put a hedge between you. You will never be brothers again. It cannot happen. We are one we have been one before historically. We have been one before politically. We have been one before we are one. We are one, and we continue to be one. And we see the we will see the world in the same direction. We are different. We are different from La Republic. This La Republic, they look like some some people who came from somewhere. And even when you listen to us, you listen to them. When you see what we are fighting for and what and their attitude. We see that you discover that we came from different planets. And I want to also say that. Listen to what happened. When we, we attempted to join La Republic in this failed union, and they decided to come in with cultural assimilation. This, they, they, in, they activated their program to assimilate us and wipe us out completely. The only cultural escape we had was Nigeria. I went to school in Nigeria in the Polytechnic of Calabar and the University of Calabar for my undergraduate because we had no place. The system had no place for us in La Republic. So the only escape we had from that plan of annihilation became Nigeria. Most of us. But the I remember I was doing my first degree program. He came for his PhD in University of Calabar. Barista Bobga, University of Calabar. Most of us, we, had, we were able to escape this cultural, uh, 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 this cultural war that they started to annihilate us as a people, we're able to escape, to go to Nigeria and still have the kind of education they did not want us to have. And some of us came back and started teaching our people and teaching them, inculcating the values, the Anglo-Saxon values. 
so that if any nation has contributed to keep the flame of this of our culture and our heritage alive in Cameroon, it is the nation of Nigeria and the people of Nigeria, the institutions of Nigeria. We salute you, we congratulate you. This problem shall not divide us. We are a peace-loving people. But what will you do when somebody comes with a gun, enters into your house, and starts shooting your people? Start killing your husband or your wife? Kills your son and kills your daughter? <clears throat> I want to kill the others that are still remaining. What will you do? What will you do? Won't you defend yourself? And if you do, in the process of defending yourself, should you be accused for, for what? For what? Don't we have the right to defend ourselves? If we have been together in a failed union for 56 years, have we ever taken up arms to fight anybody? All the injustice, all the corruption, all the killing, all the maimings, have we ever? But this time around, they are in a, on a mission, a genocidal mission, to wipe us out. And we have buried thousands and, th and, and hundreds, and thousands are missing. And in our, in the La Republic uh, 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 society, when people are missing, it means they are dead. Because where are they? They are not in Kundegi, they are not in Bafusam, they are not in Boya, they are not in Bamenda, they are not in Dwala, but they are missing. So you see how many thousands when this when this war shall be ended and we want to count from family to family how many people are missing you see how many thousands have died have they have been killed maimed buried in mass graves when a people bring war to your doorstep to start, start killing you killing members of your family and you flee in the forest and they follow you in the forest to kill shoot you down in the forest what will you do that is where we are let every lawyer in Nigeria, let everyone who is defending our people, let every Nigerian with a conscience, let him answer us that question. What will you do against such assailants, such terrorists who come to kill and to steal what you have, to burn down your houses, burn down villages, and shoot the able people on their legs and spread so much terror? What do you do? That is exactly what we are trying to do. We are trying to encourage the people to defend themselves. We are not terrorists. We are not a threat to enter to anybody's security. Not, not to the country that is hosting 40,000 of ours. Not to the country that we too, Ambazonia, we are hosting about 2 million Nigerians in Ambazonia. 2 million. They are whole villages close to three quarters of a county like Indian, all made up of Nigerians. More than two million Nigerians are in Ambazonia. We cannot afford to have a problem with Nigeria. These are our brothers in many, many ways. And I want to use this opportunity to appeal to the men of God in Nigeria. If you are a man of God, you are automatically a state man. Because all power belongs to God. And if God has given you power and has made you a king and a prince in a particular land, he has put you in authority. You must be able to have good communication with those who exercise political authority, political power. You must be able, and some of you, you have their phone numbers in your hands. You can just press the phone like this. Vice President Osibanjo will be answering your call. You are a man of God. Daddy G.O. of Redeem. Bishop David Oyedepo. Bishop Mike Okonkwo. Bishop Orise Jaffo. People and all the people like Dr. Umopai and as many as we know, even the young generation, 
like Apostle John C. Suleiman, like Prophet T.B. Joshua. We, you are so many of you in Nigeria. This is a time that you can take your phone and listen and, and call somebody and call the government of Buhari and call Pastor Osibanjo, the vice president, and call him and tell him, this is not the time to succumb to international pressure. Follow your conscience. Because these are God-fearing people. Ask them to listen to their conscience. Because they cannot deliver these people who have been forced to defend themselves. Who? Come on. They cannot kill them because they are speaking for a people who are who have been forced to defend themselves. Call them and tell them the right thing to do. The governor of Christ Cross River State, you are a child of God. I know you. Prophet Omoto Jeremiah, you are a man of God with influence in Nigeria. Pick up your phone and call because a people are under the threat of complete annihilation. Genocide is going on in Cameroon. And these are the survivors who find themselves in Nigeria as refugees. And this is our leadership to bring an end to this injustice and give us our nation that we once had and join together with Nigeria. These people must not be handed over to some murderers who came, who are paid by some, some people, uh, some oil companies in France. They must not be handed. You will not have that legacy. It should not be written against the name of this administration. That is the number one God-fearing that I know in the history of Nigeria. This is a time for you to pick up your phone in the name of Jesus Christ and call and call and call them and tell them and tell them what God says. Thou shalt not kill them. Any attempt to collaborate with the dark forces of La Republique or the dark forces of the French is a tantamount to murder. That is cold-blooded murder. And in the state of Nigeria, the Federal Republic of Nigeria cannot, will not participate in such. We are an innocent people fighting for our rights. Let them give us the due process. Tell them. Tell them that you are not interfering in the legal process. In the, in the, in the, in the, but that they should be given their day in court. That the law should be applied. Please, man of God. Please, man of God. I don't know how many, I cannot remember which ones I know in Nigeria again. Please, man of God, it is the time for you to pick up your phone. Bishop Kawas in Abuja. Prophet Kure. And all the people who, some of you, you know the story because you are very close to the nation of Ambazonia. This is a time we count on you. Pick up your phone and talk to the leadership of your government. This, they must not agree and connive with the vampire regime of Yaoundé to kill an innocent people. We are gentlemen. Remember, we are the real Commonwealth members, not La Republic. We are gentlemen. We are ready to talk and we are ready to agree. Without, without bloodshed, if whatever the decision may be, we will abide. We have all in, we have, we have, we have interests one in one on, in the other, for one another. Please let the church leaders arise. This is when you know you are a statement or not. This one. 
There are many things that have happened in Africa and they have happened far away. So some of you have not seen that. But this one has come right to your door. They are about to take to the guillotine a people who are innocent, who are just fighting for the right of those who have been massacred. And so your pitch at this time is needed. As you pray, some of you have prayed already in church today on Sunday. Pick a phone and call your friend, some of whom are in government. Call the judge to just do the, to just do the right thing. Because if they just do the right thing, it shall be over. That's it. I want to second um, Secretary Chris on, the, on announcing the ghost town. The ghost town which has been declared for tomorrow is called the Solidarity Ghost Town. Total ghost town in all the nooks and crannies of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. Please. You are we should have a kind of ghost town we have never seen. If you are angry, if you are disturbed, if you have had any reason to think and even had a sleepless night because of this issue, this is the time to express that your anger, your, your, your dissatisfaction, your frustration. Stay at home as a mark of protest, as a mark of solidarity with your leaders who were just arrested like some common criminals. We also intend to do the same, to march in all the embassies of the, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on a later date, on a date to be announced. We are monitoring the situation to see whether the rule of law shall prevail. And if we sense that there's any foul play, we shall also go out and tell the rest of the world in our numbers in front of the Nigerian High Commissions and, and embassies. We will be obliged to do so. But for now, we should make sure that our story is heard. We have email contacts of important organizations that need to know what is going on in Europe, in America. Important government organizations and international organizations and, uh, and embassies, we should use our email, we should use our powerful presence on social media, in, on Twitter to communicate, to spread the news everywhere, to, to, to inform various offices and quarters about what is wrong and what is going on. We need our people to be free now. That is what we are going to do. We are going to do a media campaign, an information campaign, that we will wait for the next few days. If nothing happens, then we all like one man. Like it happened on the 22nd of September uh, 19, uh, 2017. We shall all be on the street. We shall go to the Nigerian High Commission and embassies. Let them see our numbers and let them know our problem. Let them listen to us. Let them receive our petitions again. So, tomorrow was supposed to be school reopening day as, as uh, was, ex, was has been spread around by La Republic, which our on the first of uh, on the on the first of uh, <coughs> on the thirty first of December. The 1st of January, our President, His Excellency Seko Ayoktabe, he made it clean and clear that schools will not reopen on the, on the 8th of January. It was, clear, it was clear on that. No schools reopening on that day because the government has failed to fulfill the, the conditions. When the schools were announced to reopen on the, on the 8th, it was, that condi it was a conditional promise. And it was... It was on La Republic. The onus was on La Republic to fulfill those conditions so that schools could naturally reopen. But they did not fulfill any of those conditions. 
thereby making that that uh, promise impossible to fulfill that that uh, that conditional order impossible to fulfill but now they think that by killing the people of manu by forcing thousands of our children into manu where they are not into nigeria where they are not going to school by maiming others that even if schools open today they cannot go to cl classes by terrorizing the place and planting soldiers all over the place that people are so frightened that they cannot even come out of their houses and have a, a normal day in, to school and back they thought that by so doing now we are, will be so tired and that and that they, they can that they can now just come and say schools must reopen the the president never said that uh, if the government increases their force and their repression then we shall open the schools on the eighth that's not what the president said he said all the detainees must be released, all, all of them, all. And now we have another category of detainees. These are refugees. These are people who are now like detainees in another person's country. They live in camps. They have no rights as citizens. So these are other category of prisoners. Until all our detainees are released, all our abductees are released. And we also want to know how many, how many are there uh, 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 who are missing. We want to know about them because when you release them, we shall, you know, we know be able, you'll be able to tell us what has happened to some that we still cannot find. So that is paramount to us because they are parents. Some of them are students. How can you keep students in prison, students in refugee camps, and then you want the schools to reopen? How? The school is, is the school is reopening for who? Some of the teachers are in, in, they, they are on exile. They are in prison. When school is reopening for who? How can you say you love the children more than others? The others who say there should be no school, I hate children. They, they hate their future. Now, if you love children, what about those who are refugees? What about those who are in in in, in held in prison without trial? Are they not also children? Don't they, are they not supposed to be released to go to school? So that is a condition that has not been fulfilled. Therefore, no school reopens. All the troops, all the troops, all those hired killers, all those terrorists in Manu who are killing people in Diyar, killing people in Kumba and in Kambe, in Kumbo, all those who are in on the streets abducting people in through Kale Kale, arresting people at checkpoints. Those all those things must stop. We must have a free society. It is not like that in Yaoundé. Why is it like that in Boya? Why is it normal in Boya? Why is it normal like that in Manfe? Why is it not so in Edea? Why is it not so in Simale in 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 uh, in in in, 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 in uh, Paul Bias country. Why is it not so? Why, why should this be the norm in our place? That people still have to go to school with people armed to their teeth, who moving all over, terrorizing people, raping girls. Why should this be a normal thing in our territory? That people should see order and go to school and have a day in school. So that must stop. We must demilitarize our nation before we can come to the close to the to the place where we can consider schools to go back and then we start to explore other options if these things are not put in place they are shooting themselves to the foot there will be no school and anybody who is going to school if you have, maybe you have been going to some school that they say they are open wait and see wait and see the fight is coming to you because you are doing so at your own risk you know that very well you are doing so at your own risk, going to school, whatever you call it. When thousands are not going to school, when thousands of lives have been destroyed and nobody is doing anything towards that, you sneak and go to school or you sneak and cross the Mongo. <laughs> you know, you are helping the government to kill, to destroy a people. You are endorsing their program to destroy us as a people. Instead of frustrating that program so that they will be forced to do, do the right thing and let us go. So, 
I want you, I want to end with this note. Stop spreading any kind of hate against Nigerians in Cam in in the, in uh, Ambazonia. In the stop spreading any kind of hate because here is the plan. I want to tell you the plan. What this La Republic, this junta is going to do. They can easily try to manipulate the public opinion in Nigeria so that our refugees will become uncomfortable. They will want to make sure that the EK is not taken. They will kill Nigerians. And I'm calling this, I'm telling all the two point something million Nigerians in Amberland, be very careful, be very watchful. Because some of these La Republic agents, mafia, killers, they will want to come and harm you. And so that they will say, they will leave a flag there or leave a certain message there that, uh, Ambazonia Liberation Forces have done it. We are responsible. Or tigers have done it. They will leave some stupid note there, put a hat or a cap there or a flag there, and say we are we are the ones who have done it. So that their their, their media campaign, they will give it to CRTV. They will send it to uh, some uh, newspapers in Nigeria and pay. And those newspapers will publish it. They say Ambazonians have started killing Nigerians, so as to turn public opinion against us. They, this is a massive plan that I am afraid they will want to execute. Let the, our brothers, the Nigerians who are in, in the southern Cameroon, be vigilant. Wherever you are, whether you are not in southern Cameroon, you are in La Republic, be vigilant. These people are vicious. They are vampires. They are hyenas. They are going to do something, funny things like this, just like they did to us. When they kill our own people and they put uniforms on them and say we are killing soldiers, they can do anything. So be very careful. Be very, very careful. This is the evil master plan that La Republic has in order to, to, to continue to manipulate the government and the administration of uh, 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 His Excellency Buhari that don't you see these people who told you they are dangerous, you said no, don't you see? They have started killing your people, so don't do anything. Don't house them. Don't keep them. Don't take care of them. Don't allow them to live in your territory. Give them to us. Let's crucify them. They are, they are dangerous. That is the master plan of the, uh, of, of the French mafia and, and this evil regime in Yaoundé. So they will want to do that, but we have gone a step ahead. And we are going to publish this truth everywhere. We are going to tell it to the men of God. We are going to tell it to the press. We are going to write to the government of Nigeria. We are going to forewarn them about what this evil regime is planning all together to do. Our hands, our fingerprints will be nowhere to be found. We will never, we shall never touch any Nigerian. We shall never touch any Nigerian administrator. We are not fools to be ungrateful for the, to the people who have done so much for us and for whom, from whom we are also benefiting so much. We will not afford to bring a, put, bring a hedge between a people who are so many in our territory. And we have coexisted for 50-something years and in peace and harmony. So we are not going to fall into that trap. And we just want to warn the people of, of, of Saudi Cameroon to be careful. Don't fall into that trap. Be watchful. When you find, if you, if you see anything, say something. Say something. Send it on WhatsApp group. Send it to us so that we can blow it up and into the, to the top of our voices. Let the world know. When they are planning anything and you know it and you see it and you hear it, say something. Report it to the, to, to our, to the government so that we can take uh, notice of that and spread the news and inform the authorities. So let all our self-defense group take, take note. Our enemy is not Nigerians, so, so don't vet your anger against them. The any uniformed person in La Republic, and every person that represents the authority of La Republic is our enemy, because these are the ones that have enslaved us and that want to keep us as their slaves. Those are our enemies. Not, not a Nigerian businessman, not a Nigerian fisherman, not, a, not any Nigerian authority. No, they are not. We are British Southern Cameroonians. 
And so, let it be known, and I call everyone now to make your wartime donation. To make your wartime donation. This is the time to do your wartime donation. Because we have just attained our, the peak of, of, our, of our struggle right now. Now is the end nearer than where we started. This is the time. This is the time when we make, we go the extra mile to make our contribution. This is the time that we go the extra mile to make the contribution we have never made before. When the enemy decides to go the extra mile, you cannot say you are tired. That is when you have to put in, put, put in, put in the gas and go even the extra mile with the enemy. Because if the enemy taught by any means that by so doing, we shall be weakened. As they are saying somewhere in Bamenda, they are making some false propaganda and spraying around and saying that everything is now normal. The enemies, are, <laughs> this is a joke. This is the joke of the century. They are joking. They don't know what they are talking about. We just started. Some of us just got radicalized now. Some of us who were watching and thinking that something, something, something different might be the outcome, we have just been radicalized. We have just added, at least one million has just been added to the pool of radicalized British Southern Cameroonians. If the French thought that by so doing, by, by arresting our leaders and doing some funny things to make them uncomfortable or probably succeed to Ex extradite, ex extradite them. I don't know how because 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 in a cor in a corrupt in the corrupt machinery of the French, everything is possible. Uh, if they thought that this is how they can end this matter, they were just dreaming. They were in a la la land. For now, the power, the pa the the fight has just started. The 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 fight has just started with a, a with some hundreds of thousands of newly radicalized people who said, okay. So you want to take all of us out. If you are taking away the head, we are the toe. Why should the toe be afraid of you? If you can cut a man's head, why should the toe be afraid of you? Why should the hand be afraid of you? How far is the hand better if you can take away the head? So we are in for an altogether existential war. I call for a, to everyone to take note of the enemy in the land of Ambazonia and beyond. They are our enemies. They will not stop at anything. We will not stop at anything. For 12 months, they have not changed their position. For the next generation, we shall not change our position. We, there is no negotiation. There is no negotiation. His Excellency Sisiko Tabe Ayok told us that the only kind of negotiation we shall have with the Republic will be is that which occurs when two nations are separating. They always come together. If there are assets to be divided, if there's any, diffic any difficulty to ascertain the boundaries of their borders, how those assets will manage after they separate, those, those, that is what we are going to talk about. We have no we will not sit for any dialogue with La Republic to discuss about the future of La Republic. Because that big lie that they talk about one Cameroon, I don't know when one Cameroon started. Is it a, with a Cameroon with a K or Cameroon with a C? When did Cameroon become one? Okay, is it Cameroon, the Cameroon with a K, which is one and indivisible? That Cameroon includes Chad. Part of Chad, part of Central African Republic, part of Gabon, the whole of Equatorial Guinea. That Cameroon includes part of Northern Nigeria and plus Southern Cameroons. If it has the Cameroon, that is one and indivisible. Therefore, we must not go. Why don't you go to Chad and tell them that we need Cameroon is here? It's one and indivisible. Go to Central Africa and tell Equatorial Guinea that Cameroon is one and indivisible. Come on, join, or join here. Come and let's join here because Cameroon is one and indivisible. When did Cameroon become one and indivisible? Who said that? Where was it written? Where was Cameroon one and indivisible in, two, in, uh, in 1960? When was Cameroon one and indivisible? When? You just make a stupid slogan and you spread it around and you believe the lie. 
You see, one indivisible. They had, we had the opportunity to create a one Cameroon in 1961. The United Nations asked us to sign a treaty of union in, uh, in, in uh, 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 11th of February. Uh, in 11th of February, uh, 1961, that we should sign a treaty of union. They refused to sign the treaty. Till today, maybe if that treaty was there, they would have shown us the treaty and said, this treaty says Cameroon is one and indivisible. But there's no treaty. So where is one and indivisible written? You people are living, the, the La Republic, you people are living in La La Land. You tell yourself a lie until, you believe that lie until for you it becomes the truth. You can go and sleep with it. This Cameroon was never one and indivisible and shall never be one and indivisible. The only opportunity you had to have created a Cameroon which you can say by this document it is one and indivisible was in 1961 when you refused in your stupidity and ignorance and your depravity of Ahijo, you refused to sign a treaty of union that brought the two people together. The two United Nations Trust Territories together. There was supposed to be a treaty of union that brings these two trust territories together. That treaty of union, if it had been signed, probably would have included the word one and indivisible, but it was not signed. Thank God. So where did you come with Cameroon is one and indivisible? So I want to go, but I want to assure you tomorrow ghost town begins. Your president and his administration are safe. We are pursuing, we are having a legal battle now. That's it. It's a legal battle. And we have one of the best legal minds in Nigeria. And, and some of the best legal minds in Nigeria, they are on our side. The battle continues. Those who can pray, I tell you to pray. Those who can pray, it's time to pray. Every prayer warrior, it's time to pray. Let's go. Let's get started tomorrow. And pray like never before. Our God is on our side. Victory is sure. This battle, if we did not, if we did not mean, make, if we did not constitute a threat to the Republic, they will not be so desperate to spend what they don't have. Their economy is sinking. Their soldiers cannot be paid. The defections are increasing. And the economy is going down. And they are desperate. They are still going to spend what they don't have. If we did not really make a threat, to the, uh, we did not constitute a threat against these people. Why should they spend and spend even their lives just to track us or to stop us? That we are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. The Republic can kill some, but they cannot kill all. You see, like, 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 like Honorable Weaver told them, when the people shall arise, <laughs> You can bring all the soldiers from China, from, from France, and gather them all together. They cannot stop them. And that is the hour. This is the hour. It has come. You will have to kill to the last one. This revolution is not led by, by, by one man. There is no one man who says, I incarnate this revolution. Therefore, if you take me away, which the Republic in their depravity, they will think that if they take that one away, all oh, the revolution is over. It's not a one-man revolution. It's not a one-man-led revolution. So don't even ask the question, what happens now with the interim government? We are here. This is a government. This is a council. This is a governing council. We are here, right here. And we are, we are pulling the shots and making the decisions. Aluta continua. The devil is a liar. He cannot succeed. He has already failed before he started. We are going to have, continue to have our cabinet meetings as I'm speaking. Cabinet meetings are going on. We are making decisions. The best possible minds we can have are meeting, are discussing, are consulting, and we are taking those decisions. The battle has just started. God bless Ambalan. God bless the people of the Southern Cameroon, Ambazonia. God bless the people of Nigeria and the Federal Republic of Nigeria.
Thank you very much. Bye-bye.